What is up everyone and we are back with another guide about Fantasy Star Online 2. Today we are talking about the Divide Quest and getting S rank on solo and group play. First you need to know why you should do Divide Quests. They drop Luma Fragments, Modules for Crash Series, Units, and the Steel Weapons, as well as Ultimate Boosters and Pure Photons. I made an in-depth guide about Steel vs Crash, so if you want to check that video out, it is listed in the description down below. It also gives Glare Augments. These are required for Absolute Glare and Guardian Soul. So if Endgame is your goal, you need to farm Divide Quests. Unfortunately, not many people understand how this works for S rank, so that's why I'm making this guide for you. So if you like guys like this, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. The Vite Quest can be completed solo play and group play. Since the Vite Quest scale depending on how many people are in the map, solo play is quite viable. When you first start a Divide Quest, you can see different stages, stage 1 through 5, 6 through 10, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25, 26 to 30. Later on, we're going to get 31 to 35. To get to the next stage, you need to get an overall S rank. You don't need S rank in every single map or stage, just an overall S rank for the whole run. Each stage is harder than the next, with a different boss. The harder stages will reward you with more rare drop rates, and here are the stats. Stage 1 through 5 increases your rare drop rate by 50%, and you get initial 10 lives. 6 through 10, divide points plus 30%, rare drop rate 100%, lives 10. From 11 to 15, divide points 110%, rare drop rate 150%, and lives 5. Stage 16 to 20 increases your divide points by 150%, rare drop rate by 200%, and your initial starting lives is 5. Stage 21 plus is where it gets very difficult. 21 to 25 is 300% divide points, 250 rare drop rate, and you start off with 1 life. So if somebody dies in the very beginning, you guys lose. Stage 26 to 30, your divide points is 400%, and your rare drop rate is 300%. And like stage 21 to 25, you only get one life starting. So as you can see, the higher in stage you go up, it gets harder, but with increased rewards. In the earlier stages, they drop a lot of divide medals. However, we can easily get these through exchanging one recycle badge for 60 divide medals. So if you want to farm Lumi Fragments, you need to reach the higher stages, like 21 plus, as they drop more Lumi Fragments than the earlier stages. Let's talk about the missions. When you first select the mission, there are two options, more points or more lives. What some of you may or may not know is that if you do not get an ace rank on that mission, you only receive half the rewards. So for example, if you pick more lives at a reward of plus two lives, and you get S rank, you get two lives. If you get A rank or below, you only get one extra life. This doesn't mean much in lower stages as you already have 10 lives as a team. But at stages 21 plus, you start off with only one life so if someone dies in the very beginning, it's game over and you have to restart. That is why you should strive to reach S rank in every single map that you play. If you are a solo player, your selection is going to be different than group play. In my opinion, it is easy to get to high stage with solo play as you can only rely on yourself. However, in higher stages, you should aim to find a full party. That is because the map cover ops where you collect devices and crystals is the best in the game to farm for Luma Fragments in higher stages. As a solo player, it is hard to cover the whole map so most solo players skip it, but with a group of 4 you can split up and collect everything. For this covert ops map, you start and you gather crystals. You can either touch the crystals with your character or just attack them from afar to receive the points. For example, on my ranger I just use my launcher because it has an AOE attack and I hit the crystals to get those points. Sometimes there are blue highlighted bosses. Upon killing these, it increases your score dramatically, and you're gonna be increased by a few ranks. So if you see one of these, call it out so your team can kill it and get more devices. Speaking of devices, they spawn when you reach the next rank. B rank will spawn a few, A rank is the next group, S rank is the next, and S plus rank and maximum points will spawn the next five. Thus, you need to get to maximum points as soon as possible. This map is not time, however at 3 minutes, Corrosive Rain will start to drop, dealing 60 damage to you and reduce your healing by half. At 4 minutes, this damage increases to 100 damage and reduces your healing to 1 per instant. That is why it is imperative to try to reach the maximum amount of points as fast as possible 
to try to reach those 20 devices. Your party leader needs to leave before you all die because there is a limit to lives. So as a party leader, it is recommended to stay near the exit when the rain starts dropping and watch everyone's lives. Then, before everyone dies, leave the map. Everyone else should split up and try to find all those devices. And the reason for collecting all of these devices is that six of those boost your attack, five of those boost your max HP, four boost your max PP, four gives you PP regeneration, and one gives you an extra life. On top of that, each device you collect gives you a box at the end of this stage. When your party exits the stage, you are teleported to a red crystal and boxes depending on how many devices you collect. Since 20 is the maximum devices, you can get a maximum of 20 boxes. These boxes are where you get most of your rewards. In higher stages, nearly all of these boxes drop Luma Fragments and sometimes Pure Photons, Ultimate Boosters, and Die Yards. In the lower stages, you get more Divide Metals than Lumen Fragments. In the higher stages, you get more Lumen Fragments than Divide Metals. That is why you should aim to get a full party in higher stages and do Covert Ops maps. As a solo player, this level is skipped most of the time, so I recommend doing solo play until you get to higher stages. One cool trick that not many people know is that when you first start Divide Quests, you have two map choices. If they both are terrible, all you have to do is reroll the map by restarting the Divide Quest. It is a simple trick, but if you are doing stage 26 to 30, why not keep rerolling for a life map with Covert Ops? Since at stages 21 plus, you only get one life, you should always try to get the life map first. And Covert Ops is the best for farming Luma Fragments, so why not try to get life map with Covert Ops? One debate is picking extra points or extra lives. In the earlier stages, extra points is always recommended, but in later stages like 21 plus, you start off with one life, so extra lives are highly recommended for most of your maps. As you finish stages throughout the run, select lives or points depending on your team needs. When you're selecting a map, there are also surprise effects, and some of them are positive and some of them are negative. This is something to consider in higher stages as it can reduce your HP dramatically, leaving you open to a one-hit kill or one-hit death. So if you didn't know this, and your party starts randomly dying in higher stages, that is the reason why. Always take these surprise effects into consideration on your map selection. So let's cover the other maps. The first one up is Resupply. You collect crystals and recharge the pods. This map selection differs from group play and solo play. As a solo player, this is one of the easiest maps because less enemies spawn. And with less enemies, you can easily get S rank by just gathering crystals. Most crystals spawn in the corners of the map. It might be difficult to get S rank solo at first, but as you learn the map and the crystal spawns, you can easily get S rank. Since I don't play solo a lot, it is still a little challenging for me to get S rank. In group play, this is so much harder, especially in the higher stages. I usually skip this mode in group play because there are so many enemies that spawn and attack the base that we usually go down from S rank all the way down to A rank or C rank within seconds. I understand that some groups can do this easily, but for public groups, it is much harder to get S rank in resupply than it is in other maps. Usually, a good tactic is that two people collect crystals and two people defend bases. If you are collecting, sometimes you can go in a circle gathering crystals in the corner of the map. They just keep respawning and you can keep collecting them. Some maps spawn more crystals than others. In later stages, the enemy's health and damage are boosted, so that's why it's harder to maintain an S rank. For example, at stage 21 to 25, enemy attack is increased by 50%, damage reduction for them is reduced by 20%, and their HP is boosted by 130%. Stage 26 to 30, the enemy attack is increased by 65%, their damage reduction is reduced by 30%, and their bonus HP is increased by 145%. That is why most groups skip this map, because the enemy's attack, their damage reduction, and bonus health makes it much harder to get that S rank. But as solo players, they aim for this map because you can just collect crystals and get S rank as you get better. Keep in mind we are aiming for S rank as you get more rewards. The next one is Eradication Ops. You defeat enemies before the time runs out. When you defeat all 100 enemies, you automatically get S rank. Enemies here will spawn with bombs attached to them. That is indicated by the circling devices around them. 
When you kill these enemies, they explode dealing massive damage to those around it. So much that one to two explosions can kill a boss instantly. So you need to try to lure these bosses and enemies together to beat the map as soon as possible to get that S rank. In solo play, this is easy to do as it's only you dealing damage and you can easily lure bosses and enemies together. Your damage will scale depending on how many players are in the map. So if you do this as a solo player, you will have enough damage to do this by yourself. For group play, it's a little more difficult as bosses and enemies will aggro different players, making it difficult to lure bosses and other enemies together to kill them instantly. However, with a good party, it is easy to do and easy to get S-Rank. A good tip is to focus on one enemy when it spawns so you can explode all the enemies around it at once. Another tip is to try and kill exploding enemies if they spawn alone. Sometimes this will cause a chain explosion killing one enemy and then the next enemy is going to spawn and explode and the next enemy is going to spawn and explode over and over again. If you miss this or the enemy jumps towards you before it explodes, you might miss this chain explosion causing you to miss S rank. Lastly is suppression ops, just defeat the boss in a given time. This is one of the easiest maps to complete because there's only a boss and a few enemies. If you watch your rank and it reaches S+, plus, the maximum points, the boss will die instantly so you can use that as a gauge for their health. There's not much to do in this map, just defeat the boss and move on. Then there's the final stage where this is the boss stage. This spawns different bosses depending on your stage. The final stage drops glares which are required for absolute glare and guardian soul. So try to defeat the boss to get those glares as a drop. It also drops modules, however you get them if you kill the boss. You don't need to defeat both bosses, just the boss's module that you need. Some people think that you need to kill both bosses at stage 30 to get those modules but that's not true. I only killed one of them and got a module drop. On the final boss at stage 30 it usually comes down to the wire. So you need to try to focus because a few missed DPS areas could lead you to not killing both of the bosses. What's worked out for me is by killing Varuna first before Shiva. Varuna is more mobile and annoying to fight so I like to kill him first. Shiva is stationary besides a few teleports after they attack and it's easier to kill especially as a ranger. Satellite cannon absolutely destroys Shiva. You just have to time the teleports correctly because after an attack Shiva might teleport so I wait until after they teleport to use satellite cannon and when your timing is perfect you can hit Shiva one after the other. One pro tip that I was taught is for all you players who love to tank here is your time to finally shine. If you have a tank on your team that can keep aggro like a hunter etoile all you have to do is get aggro on both of the bosses and keep them in a corner. This reduces their movement like teleports and dashes dramatically allowing your team to dish out huge amounts of damage. This is an easy way to kill both bosses at stage 30. So with all of these stages, which is the easiest for S rank? As a group party, in my opinion, you should always try to get Cobalt Ops. If you don't get this as a role in the beginning, try to reroll the map by re-entering the Divide quest. This is the best because it gives you the most materials like Lumen Fragments, Pure Photons, Divide Metals, and Ultimate Boosters. Next is Suppression Ops. Defeating the boss is extremely easy and nearly all the stages I do, we always get S rank. Eradication Ops. This is easy to get S rank if you lure bosses and enemies together as they explode each other. Lastly is Resupply. This is the absolute hardest map to get S rank with a full party in higher stages as more players means more enemies that spawn. If you are a solar player, resupply is the easiest as you can just farm those crystals and get S rank. This applies at most stages. I haven't done this on stage 21 plus, so I might be corrected. Suppression Ops, killing the boss is easy because your damage scales depending on how many players are in the map. When you're soloing, you get the most damage. Thus, it's an easier time to kill the bosses. Next is Eradication Ops. As a solo player, it is easy to get aggro on enemies and lure the enemies and bosses together so you can explode all of them at once. Lastly is Covert Ops. Since this map requires you to gather crystals around the whole map, a solo player will have an extremely difficult time getting S rank on this. So usually when this map appears, they skip it. However, it can be done, it's just much harder to do solo than as a group. And that's it, a Divide Quest S rank guide. If you have any questions or missed something, please let us know in the comments down below. 
I do mainly do group parties to farm Lumen Fragments, and if you need any help and are on ship 1, let me know so I can help guide you and your group through a few runs. And that's it for this video. If you liked this video and it helped you out, please hit that like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you all for tuning in and listening, and until next time.